Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Praxis Speech Sister podcast. My name is Melanie Evans. I'm an ASHA certified speech language pathologist and certified mindset coach here to not only help you get over the hurdle of passing your SLP Praxis exam, but also give you the tools and strategies necessary to embody your envisioned success as a speech language pathologist. If you are new to the family, welcome, welcome. I would love to lead you to the list of free resources in the show notes. You can check out that growing list. Also, I will just have to let you all know, I might speak a little bit fast because I am in between speech therapy sessions, so that's why I have these scrubs on. So if I'm speaking a little bit fast, I am so sorry in advance. Please please, please, please feel free. And you're welcome to reach out to me on the Praxis Speech Sister Instagram. It's just instagram.com slash Praxis Speech Sister. And I will put that link in the show notes. So let's go ahead and get into today's episode. So today's episode is about why you should take the practice exam before you should even start studying for the SLP Praxis. So yes, take the practice exam before taking the Praxis exam, but I highly recommend taking it before you even start the studying process. And here's why. First of all, before I even get into those reasons, actually, I gotta tell you which ones I recommend. I recommend taking the ETS practice exam before taking any other exams. There are Fripti and Fripti is also a really good resource. My clients have used Fripti. I didn't use Fripti personally, but my clients do. And what I do like about Fripti is that they will include the rationale behind the answers in their test. ETS doesn't do that. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down now that I'll talk about the pros and cons of ETS versus Fripti. Yeah. I recommend the ETS exam because it's the most comparable to the actual Praxis exam. So I'm always going to recommend ETS for the Praxis exam. Let's just say that you just resonate more with Fripti. The bottom line is just to take a practice test. So here are some tips that I have for you. First of all, you should take a practice test because it builds your confidence and self-esteem And I believe that by building your confidence, you overall will have reduced test taking anxiety over time. So I like to think of it as like when you first started driving or when you first learned to drive, you were a little bit nervous or maybe you weren't that nervous, but you weren't sure about what that driving experience would be like. Would there be a lot of traffic or what, how do I even brake? You know, things like that. So taking the practice exam for the Praxis exam is just like learning how to drive for the first time. So when you first started learning how to drive, you know, maybe you were a little bit shy with it. Maybe you drove like 20 miles an hour on the highway or whatever that meant for you. But now that you, you know, I have some experienced drivers listening to this. So now you might be a bit more confident with it. You might be switching lanes all quickly. You might be taking cross country trips. So it's just like that. It will build your confidence and help reduce test taking anxiety over time. The second reason why I recommend taking the practice exam is because you get to practice test taking strategies. So the main strategies that I will recommend on this podcast and I used myself and that I recommend to my clients is the mark, skip and return method, going with your gut not spending more than 60 seconds on a question. This helps you save time and so on and so forth. And oh, and also doing what you can to just really figure out what the question is really asking. So I highly recommend taking the practice test while using those strategies. So that way it's just same thing, just like driving a car for the first time. When you're able to build that confidence and use different strategies and as far as being defensive in your driving, you're able to do the same thing on the practice exam. So that way, when you get to the practice exam, you're like, okay, I've run into a question like this before. Or, okay, I've run into even like if you're just looking at yourself and how you respond to a question. Okay, I've been stumped on a question before. Now I know that I've practiced a lot of times just not spending more than 60 seconds on a question, I know to just mark, skip and come back to it. And then I save myself time and I ended up getting the question right. 
So these are things that we want to happen. The third thing I recommend and why you should take the practice exam is because you're building your stamina. Now, if you are an ADHD or like me, you need to get that practice in. Or let's say that you are bilingual. And unfortunately, the Praxis exam is not in any other language but English. So if you are an ADHD -er or bilingual or really just overall you don't like sitting for long periods of time, this will help you build your stamina in taking this long, I believe it's a 130 minute test. You'll be able to know the strategies like taking frequent breaks or even just stretching and taking deep breaths. Whatever strategies that you find really help you out to get through that 130 minutes, you're going to be able to do it, but it'll be difficult for you to be able to do it if you haven't done it before. And again, I like to relate it to a car. If you've had a long commute in the past, you know, okay, well, I've done this before. I've driven 30 minutes to get to a friend's house before. So now I know I can maybe spend 60 minutes to get to another destination that I want to go to. So it's the same thing. The last thing I will say for taking the practice exam over the praxis exam is that you're able to assess your strengths and weaknesses. Now, I love using the results from the practice test, especially if you haven't taken the practice exam before, because like I said, ETS is very accurate. It'll let you know the content areas. So it'll let you know what your score was in the foundations content area, in the treatment content area, or in the assessment content area. And then you're able to take that data, take that information, and let me actually backtrack. Not only do you know your three content areas, but as you're taking the test, you probably have mental notes. Ooh, I'm very rusty when it comes to speech hearing science, or I'm very rusty, or I haven't learned very much about cleft palate, or oh, my teacher for fluency wasn't all that great. You know, so, so this is giving you the data that you need. Okay, so now I know these are certain materials that I'll need to gather so that way I can help myself study for it. And you can just take that data and put it towards your study plan. So I hope that this episode helped you. Go ahead and check out the free resources link again, and you will find the Praxis Study Checklist, and this will help you as far as putting together your study plan. Please join the email list because I give a lot of freebies on that email list. And coming up soon, I will be helping you out with study plans, and you'll have more tips and tricks to help you. If you are new here or if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe this episode. This really helps the channel in the podcast wherever you are viewing. And I just look forward to seeing y'all again. All right. Bye, fam. Oh.